This is the Hour of Awesome with Robert, Chris, and Steven. This isn't the hour of neat, cool, or rad. It is all going to be awesome. Okay, welcome to the Hour of Awesome, episode uh, 15. <laughs> I think that's what it says. Uh, as good as any. Chris completely threw me for you audio listeners you missed out, but I expected this little android to wander across the screen like he usually does, but it was a Not bottle of mustard. <laughs> yes, that is my new office mustard right here. It is uh, all natural, probably not, yellow mustard. Uh, that was... Why, why do, you, do you have like other areas that you have mustard in? You have an office mustard, you have like a car <laughs> mustard. I, I'm not sure what well, you're... Yeah, if you're eating a hot dog in the car, you want mustard on it. <laughs> I mean, I do know that you have you have a guidebook coming out soon on the best of uh, gas station cuisine, and I imagine that your mustard you'd bring with you just to, you know, normalize the process of reading gas station cuisine. Oh, I've had to back off the gas station cuisine. I think I'm getting too old for that shit now. Um, the last time I had it, I kind of felt really sick. Not kind of. <laughs> I felt really sick. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like the salt. I think that was the problem. I think yeah, it was yeah that's the salt. problem. It's the salt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> of all the things it could have been, it was probably the salt. Yeah, it's not the, you know, oil or the gas or yeah, the no. sitting under a sun lamp for four or five <laughs> days. Well, you gotta have the sun lamp. It gives it that gas station flavor. <laughs> well, you know, the it's problem. like the hot dog rollers, but you can put fried chicken on there too and just have those roll around for a while. Yeah. You know, sure. that would be kind of cool, actually. <laughs> you know, chicken that legs be... rolling on one of those things. <laughs> Could you imagine the flavoring? Like the hot dog infused chicken <laughs> oh, leg? God. That just sounds awesome <laughs> to me. There's some french fries on that roller. Oh, oh. man. Sort of... You see, I still have that, sure that cough that. switch installed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would say, I, I, I'm pretty sure I saw that at the fair I went to today, since it was the, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Grange Fair. Oh, God, you went to the Grange? I went to the Grange. It's the 140th anniversary of the Grange Fair encampment. It's the 140th uh, for of anniversary of ever... people being bored out of their skull. Oh, no, no. It's it's a thing. So it's a week-long camping something or other. People have been passing down for generation to generation their camping spots. And they have sort of like those army tents, not like a regular tent. They have like the whole-on army tents. Yeah. Uh, and around that, you have all your RVs. And mixed in all of that, you have food and, you know, shopping and you know, fair rides and things like that. But it's really one of those things like you'll be walking along and you'll have tents on one side and you'll have, you know, fried food right in front of it. And you oh. sleep next to the fried food. Have, have you been look. to this thing, Chris? No, it sounds like oh, I should go. He is though. not describing these tents to give them justice. You'll huh. get there and there'll be ones that'll say like 85th year that they've been there. Mm -hmm. And in these tents, they'll have a refrigerator <laughs> and like a couple of couches and like half their living room that they brought with them. Yep. Nice. It's bizarre. It, it's 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 a thing. I mean, it's it's a you know passed down from generation to generation. It's a really yeah. big deal. Yeah, to you some people, get, like the local, you you can get the carnival food right because they'll have those yeah. things. You'll get you know your fried dough or your gyro, which they call it gyro for some reason, and so forth. Or you can go to like the local people. They have some woman who's been making pierogies for like forty years, and so she just has a little stand and she just make it's the called pierogies place, and she makes fantastic pierogies, which is just you don't normally wander to like county fair and have pierogies right right yeah i got that right <laughs> there's a reason <laughs> oh come on they're fantastic Sound, that oh. sounds like heaven to me yeah it, it sounds like a, a yeah it sounds like a awesome afterlife oh then you can also walk through the other places <laughs> that you have you know their their pig barn and their goat barn and their chicken barn and rabbits and so forth because they also you know related to um 4-h and all those pieces but uh and you can go see cow shows and and they grade them and, you know, get ribbons and all that. And then I think tonight, or maybe it was last night, Chubby Checker was performing. And I didn't know he was alive still. So that was the, exciting. Did he have the fat boys with him? <laughs> <laughs> you remember the song from, like, the 90s? Chubby Checkers and the fat boys? They made Disorderlies. What a fantastic right. movie that was. Yeah. Oh, God. Disorderlies? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. They do the twist. Uh. Well, uh... So, what's been going on with you two this week? I'm going to save mine for when I rant. Um, but I'll walk Steven? away then. Don't. Uh, I was at the Grange Fair. It was fun. You went every day this week? No, I went today. We oh, went okay. there this afternoon. Oh, my God, man. You really no, drank the Kool-Aid. 
Actually, it's the first time I've, I've been here for six years. The first time I've been. My wife has been two other times because, you know, take the kids, go see a pig. It's very exciting. Oh, I can see the uh, kids getting into it, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's food and whatever. I mean, it's it's well, they wandering have carnival around. rides and there's animals yeah. and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's all fun. Um, beyond that, saw uh, what was that? I saw Gardens of the Galaxy. Oh, I saw that. Yes, oh, I want to see that. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, it's better than I thought it was going to be. To no, be honest it's, with you. It's, yeah, it's it's very not the normal film in some I mean yes it's obvious and you know there's the big bad that does the big bad things and so forth but there was a good sideways sense of humor to it yeah yeah uh, which I really appreciated um, I'm not going to ruin it but the post credits scene was <laughs> yeah. ridiculous <laughs> yeah it was yeah that part I know about okay so yeah. but there's that aspect of it and I guess that's the whole thing so it's a James Gunn thing if you've ever seen it he did uh, Super which okay. is take on superhero films before yeah. which was really twisted it's on my netflix queue and i haven't watched it yet it's on everybody's netflix queue i'm pretty <laughs> sure if you have everybody it's i've required. ever talked to is like did you ever see super it's like it's on my netflix queues like, all right well, you know recommended apparently they paid some good money to netflix to recommend it to everyone yeah, yeah. well i actually did see a movie uh my wife and i we went and saw the hundred foot or hundred yard journey i think it's a hundred foot journey uh helen Isn't like a movie about old people what isn't that a movie about old people? No, it's not a movie about old people. <laughs> <laughs> a no. Really short foot race. Yeah. Foot. No, oh. it's uh, this this um, Indian family in southern France opens up an Indian restaurant 100 feet across from a one-star Michelin French restaurant in a little small town. And kind oh. of the whole interplay between those two families and cultures and the one boy being a chef and this kind of stuff. But it was really good. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. A um, little bit of a chick flick, but I, I, I was into it. Yeah, but I would have rather have seen Guardians of the Galaxy because, well, yeah. yeah. I won't spend nine bucks on a movie that doesn't contain explosions, swearing, and preferably nudity, but doesn't have to have nudity necessarily. Uh, well, the mother burns to death in the opening scene. As you can see, the film's an upper. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it starts heavy That's, drama and then ends up almost Disney Phil Goody at the end. Fair enough. I wonder if it was a Disney film. You know, I think it was a Disney film. Or one of the one of the studios. Oh. Uh, Mir uh, what who do they own? They own everybody now. They own Miramax. Yeah, so it might have been a Miramax. Was Ben do Affleck and Matt Damon it? No. Do they own Lionsgate? Uh maybe. I don't so I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, it had the pseudo indie Phil. Yeah, it sort of it was, sort of felt like an indie film, but it wasn't an indie film, kind of thing. But it's it's definitely worth seeing. Okay. So. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, have you been watching the Marathon Simpsons on FXX? I don't no. think I get that channel. In fact, I'm pretty certain <laughs> I don't get that channel. <laughs> Come on. I haven't been watching anything of anything. Yes, uh, I I know you have a um, easy life, uh, as our as our listeners already do know that you are uh, you had promised to not be in that background today, so uh, you are. So we'll yeah. we'll get to that. I'm still in the chalet, mm. <coughs> or skiing out back, as it were. Yeah. So, Chris, anything you want to pass along? Uh, I did a couple of interesting things this week. Um, Sunday, I went to Knobles. It's a theme park not too far from where we all live. And uh, it's interesting because you don't pay to get in. You pay per ride. Um, and you go up to the rides and they'll say 250 a ride or a buck 25 a ride or whatever. And you buy these tickets, you know, $10 packs or whatever. And I think it's kind of a cool take on a theme park uh, because, you know, I'm not a big ride person. So if you show up to the uh, theme park and you don't ride a whole lot of rides, you're kind of getting screwed because you're still paying for food while you're in there. So this was, you know, I thought the food in there was reasonably priced. And I had a fine time. I'm not a huge amusement park guy, so I had a good enough time. And we, I think if you have kids, it's probably a really good place to go. Um, or if you like rides, theme park rides, it's probably a pretty good place to go. But other than that, it was all right. And then, uh, let's see, Wednesday, I got to see a place where planetariums are made, which was really kind of cool. They're a planetarium su supplier. And they showed us the factory of how they build the domes and how they build the superstructure that, that that supports the dome. And then we got to see all the different sort of bells and whistles you can get for inside a planetarium. So that was pretty cool. Um, kind of a neat experience. Cool. 
and that's all I want to talk about with my week. I didn't even know they <laughs> they had such a thing as a place where planetariums. I, yeah, like well, a planetarium they, showroom, <laughs> like drive yeah, the planetarium had, home. Yeah, they had um, two uh, planetariums set up in their uh, factory. So when you walk in, there was sort of these two rooms to the right, and you walk in and you could go check them out. And they had a, a forty foot dome, and I think a thirty or thirty five foot dome in there, and um, they, each one was equipped differently. They have different types of materials, or I guess they're all aluminum, but the, the way the dome is pieced together actually does matter, and it can you know affect the sort of the display quality. And so they had different you know projection technologies they could show off in there, different sound, different lighting, and stuff like that. So and how many new planetariums cool. open? every year i have no idea yeah. but they said here's the interesting thing um because i was wondering about this and they said that they're in a rush right now that they are so busy um that they're running like two ships or whatever part of what they do besides planetariums is provide domes and other projection surfaces for like theme parks and so they've got a bunch of stuff going to china right now and uh, i think singapore they said or Shang no, shanghai i think is where they said it was going um for uh some disney projects out there they had um, domes for that soaring, that ride in Disney World. Hmm. They had parts of that that were going down there and um, just different things that they work on. And they were showing pictures of things they put in shopping malls and put in other places that are, if they're not full domes, they are uh, partial domes for that kind of, you know, projecting on a concave surface. Right. And they had some, they're starting to do architectural domes as well. So they were showing a few architectural domes I think that's something they just recently got into. But the company's been around since 1946. Damn. It's been around. And they, they started doing just planetariums. And I think planetariums are their major business. So how many open per year? I don't know, but enough to keep them pretty busy right now. They said they had sort of a lull, I think, in the, in the 80s and 90s. But now things have picked up. And, um, you know, so they, people can say, so if we had a lull about 20 years where we didn't do, you know, business. But we're doing better now. Well, you know, I guess, uh, I guess it's relatively speaking. And they said well, they've had really hot times, too. It sounds where pretty boutique. Three ships. So yeah. let's say you want to drop one of one of these in your backyard because, well, it's your hobby. How much are you yeah. dropping on a planetarium? I have no idea. You wouldn't put one in your backyard. It's too big. Depends on how big your backyard is. Yeah, you have to build a whole building for it. So hundreds of thousands of dollars, I would think, for... <laughs> <laughs> the building and then the planetarium itself. I don't know. I, I, I really have no idea. I, I'm not aware of what the prices of anything was. Because I'm kind of curious, you know, if this is yeah. a half a million, yeah. million, 20 million. Oh, I'm it's not 20. Look that up. It's probably half mil. Oh, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Maybe, maybe a mil. Uh, because, yeah, well, I mean, I'm including like the actual building itself. Right. You yeah. know, you can't. Um, I, didn't, I, I, I knew know. you weren't going to drop it in a tent. Although yeah, yeah, at the Grange yeah. Fair, you should see these tents. <laughs> you should see these tents. <laughs> so. Oh man. Mm. Okay. Well, we'll let the rest of what happened in poor Chris's week go. Uh, I, mean, I am going to totally and utterly rant about my week. So before we, I, we completely kill the mood, and I don't, oh man, I lost the bumper again. What shall we use for the bumper this week? Death okay. Metal Let's oh, no. try this one. Sir, are you classified as human? Uh, negative. I am a meat popsicle. Okay, there we go. That's this week's bumper. <laughs> For super happy Fair fun enough. time. Uh, I don't know why. You are a really efficient and effective producer. <laughs> yeah, you... What, are you drunk? <laughs> drunk on root beer. No, <coughs> not, not drinking root beer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, water. this week we decided we're going to talk about Kill Bill. Volumes one and two. Uh, whose crazy idea was this? Uh, mine. Okay, then you start. This guy. Um, well, Stephen texted me yesterday and said, <laughs> "Are we going to do a show?" And I said, "Yes." And he said, "What are we going to talk about?" And I said, "I don't have time to watch a movie, but I can talk about Kill Bill." Steven said, I think Robert hates Kill Bill. That will be perfect. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> here we are talking about Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2. Actually, I watched it with my wife. We um, started it earlier in the week, and we finished it up yesterday just to um, in the morning or afternoon because uh, she hadn't seen it before. I hadn't seen the whole thing. And I was like, oh, well, that has to be, has to be corrected because I think Kill Bill is a cool movie. 
Um, I think I like the uh, idea of it's a revenge flick, right? I mean, that's basically yeah. what it boils down to. Yeah. But it does take a lot of different genres. And some of these things that you can see sort of like this little classic Japanese style movie, the classic kind of Western kind of thing. And there's these, just these different things that come together and produce this cool movie. The first movie has more of a grindhouse feel to it. I would say they do a little bit of the introduction is kind of grindhousey and other things like that. Uh, they kind of backed off that on the second one though, I and mean, there's not much there at all on the second um, second film. Uh, but yeah, I I think it's a cool story. I think um, it's not a it's a it's a story that's been done hundreds of times, right? It's a revenge flick, but the way the scenes are shot and the way the story is told, I just think it's I don't know. I've always liked it. Well, each person on the list is a different style essentially yes. so we have a cartoon in the case of um dealing with lucy lou i mean the, yes. there is a literally a cartoon at one point which i believe that they're re-releasing like the full cartoon that they didn't actually develop because of cost things so they're working on expanding that oh um but you know so that's and then the fight scene was you know more blood that they could possibly dump in a room yeah, uh, you know, it was just sort of just everywhere all the time, <laughs> yeah. spurting and spurting and spurting and spurting. Um, but yeah, by the time we got to the second film, it got dark and dirty and just you know, we're instead of actually getting this beautiful sort of martial arts thing, and it was just sort of brutal kinds of activities. You know, it was a lot more of that, um, which is interesting just stylistically to shift you know this tone to that tone and so forth. Uh, I'm really curious. They they started showing the whole bloody affair the single version of it which is different editing to see okay. one and two put together um i'd love to see that if they ever release it i don't, I don't know that they've released it yet on a dvd or something like that which i would actually like to see it straight yeah through i wouldn't that mind way. seeing that too yeah that would be kind of cool. see i i really liked kill bill volume one that was a fun over the top you know martial artsy artistic you know quentin tarantino of everybody dies lots of blood you know, violence fest or like a violence ballet almost. Yeah. And then Kill Bill Volume 2 was a bunch of pontificating, navel gazing, pretentious crap. I, I was so bored. And you're just like, oh, God, you take yourself too seriously, man. You're Quentin Tarantino. Get a grip. I mean, you did. Yeah. I wouldn't have been surprised if he is the uncredited director on Bordello of Blood. You know, <laughs> he's. He's Reservoir Dogs. I mean, this is his thing. Not trying to be thoughtful. Uh, so, no, it was just... It was boring. It just was slow and gray and sad. <laughs> it was just... Uh, I thought it was just a different film. I mean... Yeah. It, it, yeah, it I like the first one. I hated different. the second film. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the whole stuff with, with the master... I, again, I don't remember the name of the... the the guy yeah the, um, the trainee thingy yeah so yeah. that was i mean it was set and filmed like a 70s yep kung fu flick yep yeah you know so it was a different film there it was you know different sections of things and yet but i mean see, you don't want when you got miss... david carradine in a film and you shoot it in that style the whole thing just makes me want to go watch kung fu <laughs> well david carradine well, hang wasn't... yourself in a closet well yeah Too carradine soon. wasn't really in that part of the movie of the seventies kung fu flick. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that 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 style changed as soon as she walked up those stairs to see. I can I can't remember the guy's name yeah. either. Uh, that is when it became that seventies. It would have been almost cool if he had done like the bad voice uh, yeah. dubbing. Yeah, <laughs> that that would I thought would have been a cool element to really put it over the top. Uh, yeah, it was dark. It was gray um, because the business at hand is uh, dark and gray business. I mean, she is going to go kill a former lover. And on her way, she has to kill his brother, which she ends up not killing, by the way. And then another woman who done her wrong, as they'd say, you know. Um, Great use of Daryl Hannah. Yeah. And she was not killed either. Well, I suspect that uh, Snake probably would have gotten her in there, though. Yeah. I don't, I don't think she lives. The Black Mamba. Yeah. 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 See, I don't like pain to be depressed. I can do that oh, for I, free. I wasn't depressed. No. I, uh, I didn't find that depressing. Yeah, I, I just didn't found it. At all, yeah. It's the same reason I don't like generally watching dramas. Yeah. It's like, uh, 
No, I, I need my escapism. Yeah. I don't, I don't want anything that ever feels real. And that got too close to almost feeling real. Yeah. So it was just like, uh, no, I mean, I, I want to see people at the prison. I discovered I can just go to Wegmans. <laughs> go find Wegmans <laughs> and there's the like homing prison. Uh, <laughs> they got that right around the corner. I don't need this level of real. I, I'm glad he did not um, he could have taken the ending of like like last Uma. week's. What was last week's film, Chris? Bunraku. Yes. Bunraku. No yeah. possibility whatsoever that you could ever think that was real. Loved that right. film. Right. Yeah. Now I I think he could have taken the route. I'm glad he didn't take the ending where um, Uma Thurman basically forgave David Carradine at the end and said, "Oh, let's be a happy family with the little girl." Mm-hmm. Oh no, you I know? didn't want a happy I, ending. No, no, no. I'm glad that. Um, I wanted another spectacular that. beheading. <laughs> but you could have, but you didn't get that. Because that's not how she killed him. I know, but, that's uh, what I'm saying. I didn't get what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. But he could have he could have taken an ending with it. And uh, I think it would have completely changed the whole movie. Yeah. Uh, well, the movie that, was that, about That wouldn't revenge. have been Tarantino. No. No, no, no. no. Um, Need more toe sucking. <laughs> what? He has a foot fetish. <laughs> He does it in every damn film. No, but I thought the way Carradine died was actually quite cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, the five star finger punch or whatever it five was. Five finger death punch. Yeah, and he just as uh, a band. That was too Jackie yeah. Chan. I believe it was named after Drunken this. Master. Oh, it might have been. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah. And he just walked off to the sunset, kind of just collapsed. And I don't know. I thought that was kind of cool. I'm glad that it ended the way that it did. Mm, okay. I was just bored. <laughs> Couldn't help it. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Their own. Hey, there was this is no maximum ahead. overdrive. You know? That didn't seem set in reality, and I thought you don't like yeah. things set in reality. No, that's what yeah. I'm saying. It wasn't as good as that. Oh. 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 that That's not <laughs> it's manageable. True. The first one, I would give an eight. The second one, hmm. No, not a zero. We got to reserve that for Matrix Revolution. I'd give it or a one. Or any Rucker Hauer film. Or any, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is not on the Rucker Hauer scale. <laughs> he gets his own scale, man. Yes, right. Good point. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I got. Yeah. I actually give both movies a solid seven and a half. Oh, really? Yeah. So, uh, no, I really, I really did. I just don't like the change in tone within a film. There are other films that do that. Well, yeah, but it's a film in my head where there's a change in tone from one film to the next film, and it's almost like two different films. If it's going to be two different films, I want it to be two literally different films. And with the same part one and part two, it felt like it was supposed to be the same film. And I've never liked a change of tone midway through a film. There are other ones that do it. I can't think of it at the... Four Rooms, which Tarantino was a part of. Yeah, well, I didn't like that. I haven't seen that, I don't think. Well, that's really four different you, stories. Yeah, there were four different stories with four different directors. Yeah, and so yet that's, they were interwoven together. Yeah, I, so I really wouldn't count that. I'm talking about the same guy that just in the middle of the film decides, I'm bored with this new film. But isn't that how... Oh, you, he did it before. He did it in that stupid vampire flick. Oh, Dust from Dusk Till Dawn? Yeah, that one's two different films. One, he wrote it, starred yeah, in it. But it, whatever you know, you direct. follow it and then halfway through it switches to a totally different film. World War Z. Didn't see it. Okay. Oh, that was pretty good. That was has, uh, no. different than the book, though. Oh, it has no relationship to the book. There yeah, was no, it was a title. Yeah. But it changed at some point from like big film to tiny film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know, come on, Steven, you know all the films I like. Is there one that does it that I like? Probably. <laughs> Not helpful. It's supposed to be my memory, man. <laughs> I don't know. Every time I think I understand what you're gonna like, then you're like, "No, that was a two. I'm like, oh. "Yeah, really? Yeah." What you thought I? Yeah. You think I would have thought the reverse on this one? That I wouldn't have liked the first part, but really would have liked the second? No, I knew that you liked the uh, Lucy Liu section. You know the the, the cartoon, cartoon particularly. Yeah, the living yeah. cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. You had made a comment like in the past that, that you'd like to just extend that to the entire film. Oh, no, no, no. I was talking about um, Eeks versus Sever. Th- there's this uh, film of her and Antonio Bandaras 
that is unbelievably bad film but she has this extremely cool fight in it with uh hmm, those sticks that are short and then you flick it and it becomes a longer rod baton yeah it's like, like a, a telescoping baton yeah kind of thing. two telescoping okay. batons and like beats the living crap of out of like 50 cops <laughs> um totally over the top really ridiculous fight scene beautifully choreographed all the fight scenes in this film are beautifully choreographed and unfortunately it has the plot written by i think my daughter who can't write would do better so <laughs> there's just no plot and antonio bandaras is totally wasted in it and it was when he was doing just cool film after cool film um around the time he was doing um so what he did before desperado oh um once upon a time in Mexico was that? No, that was after. That was after. Yeah, it was the the one with the with the Spanish name. Do you remember? No. The, the Desperado was kind of a rip off rewrite of it. Like oh, El Mariachi. Yeah. D didn't I just say that? <laughs> no, I yeah. thought you said Cariachi. No. Oh, okay. karaoke? Like, yeah. oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Oh, wait, so wait, there's this karaoke, karaoke film yeah. where he comes in and starts singing bad songs. <laughs> Actually, that would be pretty damn funny if you Spanish. saw him doing bad karaoke. Yeah, like I like to see him singing Secret Agent Man. <laughs> I still think Assassin's his best film. Him looking all Greatest jittery movie. like he's on meth the whole time. Spy Kids? Spy oh God. I've Spy never seen Spy Kids. <laughs> Do yourself a favor, man. Don't. I wasn't planning on seeing Spy Kids at all. I generally it's don't a like film. I generally don't like kids movies. So, well, I would pick Spy was... Kids three. <laughs> Spy Kids three. Oh. They had three of them. I think so. I don't know. I actually did see money. the first one. <laughs> so I did not see two, and I think there was a third. I don't know. If it's not done by Brad Bird, I don't want to see it. So name? I'm going to say one thing about this film before we move on to something else. I, I actually really <laughs> liked the soundtrack yet again. Because, uh, you know, he does a, he's, Quentin Tarantino is always about, you know, sort of theming he, what he does with the soundtrack as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very big part. But this one, they actually added RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan, who is back together again, which is kind of cool. Um, and it has this sort of spaghetti western-y thing. And then they actually use that Nancy Sinatra song, Well. The uh, boots, are, boots are made for walking thing, or no, that wasn't the one that it was. It was the other one, um, but it was it was a <coughs> use of music yet again in a way that I think really drew people into the movie in, in a really fun, and interesting way. So, uh, yet again, kudos for Quentin being able to understand music and how it fits in the films. Yeah, that, that was yeah. fantastic. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. I would have liked to have seen more with um, Vivica A. Fox's character. Mm -hmm. And she was dead quickly yeah and there was not much story there at all no. i mean it was it would have been nice because they, they kind of fleshed out the other characters better than her um and i don't know why they chose to shorten her sort of section but uh but they did it would have been nice to see that fleshed out yeah there wasn't a lot of there there yeah yeah okay so time for me to rent you have bumps I should tell you so that you don't waste your time. You can't make me angry. Please spend an hour with him. Okay, so <clears throat> I was not supposed to be here <laughs> this week. Or here, here in this house. I'm not supposed um, to be here today. I'm supposed to be in my new house that I moved into last Monday where we had our closing because, well, you know, that's what you do. You go, you get this big ass check. That I'm now sitting on this big ass check from the bank, <laughs> made out to my. I don't know why they give you the large novelty checks. But yes, they the do. large novelty uh, check. <laughs> I want one of those. <laughs> yeah, ends up that the ass hat we were buying the house from was twenty eight thousand dollars underwater, and I think just mystically thought that would go away. So we think everything's fine. We go into close, and they go, oh, "No, can't get good title." I was like, "What the hell?" So then I spend the rest of the week doing two things begging every service provider that I've set up, a contractor, a painter, a moving company, a cleaning company, and several others, please don't be pissed at me for canceling on you the day before. 
I have to get the electrical and the gas back out of my name, cancel an installation from Comcast, and a crap load of other things. Um, because we thought we were moving into this house, then try to find a new house. Uh, now and at the same time, arranging to sue this guy's ass to get our money back. And it's just, uh, you know, what the hell was he thinking? If he would have been straight with us and let us know he was having issues up front, we might have been able to work out a deal, you know. But yeah, so uh, house is not bought until you've bought the house. So we did find a, a new house. I think it's going to actually work out for the best. Um, it's it's essentially two homes too big, uh, but I guess it's better to have too much space than not enough space <laughs> in a house. Um, it's in the neighborhood that we like, so it'll still cut an hour and a half a day off my commute. Yeah, but man, this whole week just got shot the hell. We arranged it perfectly so we'd have this week before my wife and I had to go. We had this whole week off we had to go back to work our daughter was in daycare we can get all the move done and then just got totally it yanked out from under my feet um yeah so we've had f two very pissed off people all week oh yeah then we find out as our water is tested in our well we find out that uh we have a polluted well that we've been drinking out of oh yay so we had to get that clean and have a uv light system put in and a bunch of other crap Wondering if we've been poisoning ourselves and for how long. Uh, well, so you had hair at the beginning of this, which is very weird. But, yes, uh, yes, I have no hair. <laughs> I, I will attach that to the well. Um, thankfully, we've been kind of anal with uh, not letting our daughter ever drink the water. <clears throat> not because we thought there was something wrong with it, but since we're on a well, it's not fluorinated. So we've been getting her this nursery water, which has some fluorination in it. Um, you know, not a lot, but a little to help so that she doesn't get cavities. So that's what we mainly have always fed her, either that or uh, bottled water out of, um, you know, one of those water machines where you come, you bring in the big five-gallon thing and stick it on top. Uh, I don't know what to call that. Bottled Pure, water. Something yeah. like that. Um, water cooler. A water cooler. Water that's cooler, it. yes. Water out of a water cooler. So at least we know she's okay. But this whole week, so to give her a bath since I didn't want her having taking a bath in bacteria water because she like chews on stuff, you know. So I'm boiling pots of water for hours. <laughs> so I can dump these in the tub <laughs> so that she can take a bath. So yeah, that's been my but week. But you've been bathing her in that water for a couple of years prior. Yeah, well we're hoping that <laughs> the reason that, it's, <laughs> that this was a recent spike from the big storm that came in because if you get a big storm and a lot of water uh, all at once, it can drain. Yeah. And this bacteria in and of itself is not dangerous in any way. It's one of those things that's a tag. If this is in your water, other things might be in your water. Uh, okay. It was tested for E. coli. I didn't have that. Uh, it's this other thing. So, yeah, we got the new system in. They're going to come in and retest at the beginning of the week. We have bottled water all over this house. <laughs> you know, big, big two-gallon things at every sink that we use to – get water out of that instead of out of the tap and yeah oh and then i also found out for the last two years that we've lived here we've had really crappy water pressure i just figured this shows you how much i know i'm a city boy you know i'm from seattle i figured you are on a well you just get crappy water pressure <laughs> so it's always been that we could do one thing fine like you could take a shower no problem but if you took a shower and run the dishwasher you know it would kind of trickle well, we had the guy come in and fix it because apparently that was all screwed up. And now we have like amazing water pressure. And she's like, holy crap, we've been tolerating this shitty water pressure for three years. That's what happens when you sell a house. You yeah. fix everything. Yeah. So then, <laughs> so the people moving in are going to have a really nice house. <laughs> Everything yeah. all fixed. Well, it's nice of you. Yeah. Give them a good experience at least. Yeah. So uh, I'm getting, we've we've hired a, a, a good house inspector. Um to inspect the new house. One of those ones that if something's wrong and they say it's not, then they have to come in and fix it all. Uh, uh, um, so there's a warranty that comes with the inspection. So they have a real, ins it costs significantly more. But right. uh, you buy an insurance plan. Yeah, because yeah. not going through this again. But the new place, it's on public water, public sewer, everything is natural gas, um, natural gas water heater, natural gas heating, uh, 
it's Comcast. Or I know a lot of people hate Comcast, but for me, it's just like Nirvana because I can have <laughs> real internet. So. Oh, I thought you were saying it smelled like Teen Spirit. <laughs> it smells like Teen Spirit. No, it smells like <laughs> Never mind. is what it smells Never like. Mind. That's right. um, yeah. So, about a month from now, we won't have this in the background anymore. I will now have the giant 1,400 square foot man cave. So, so you'll have yeah. four episodes from now, we'll have a different background. I'll finally have control of my lighting. It'll be like consistent through the episode instead of backlighting back here, the skylight, all this other crap. So uh, I think I'm You'll definitely going to put in a green screen and make it look like it. I'm podcasting from Paris. So Or the moon. I can't make up my mind. <laughs> it's Disney World. It's Disney World. Yeah. Well, maybe I will go to Disney World. I am going to Disney World. Ooh, we should do a podcast while in there. That could be fun. Guest starring Mickey? I don't know. Just wandering around i can be holding my phone out in front of me doing like skype <laughs> that will not be nauseating to yeah. all three of our viewers <laughs> hit the, hit the, oh sorry we lost you robert <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i could get this you don't want some shaky cam no Lair witch won't that make me what jj abram i can play this cloverfield okay uh no wasn't that him yes yeah. okay. i think so yes it was him yeah. Well, I, I kind of like that movie. I could buy a steady cam. <laughs> Have you ever seen that's one of those? Not disconcerting either. No. The people who like wear that around their their <laughs> neck, whatever, that sort of wander around, and it's sort of like you're bouncing up and down, but the camera is perfectly moving. <laughs> that could be I'm fun. catching my entire vacation. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just you should do a man in the street segment for us. We'll just put that into the middle of the show for Robert this week. Robert won't be here because, but he sent in this man on the street, and then you pop mm. that in. Well, I could do audio though. You could. That could be fun. So, I don't well, you know. can Figure out actually do the video if you so desire. You will have internet there. Yeah, much better than I have here. They have it all through the park now. They finally put in free Wi-Fi all through the park. You're so. paying four thousand dollars to spend, you know, the day there. I imagine they can afford. Yeah. It. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have an annual pass. <laughs> okay, so. you're spending forty thousand dollars to get as much as you want. <laughs> No, actually, if you renew your annual pass every year, you get $100 off. And if you're a vacation club member, you get $100 off. So our break-even point is actually four days. So it ends up being a pretty good deal to get the annual pass if you go more than four days a year. Uh, not as good as the Florida rate, which is, like, practically free. So. I've been there in the actual park, I think, for four days over the last 20 years. Oh, God. So, yeah, that's something. Wait, no, 30 years. You're getting kind of crunchy, Stephen. I'm always crunchy. crunchy. No, I mean, you're Skype. Not me. I'm sweet in the middle, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go live in a forest. Yeah. Okay. Well, Stephen, you take over now. <laughs> Self-realization, I was thinking of the immortal words of Socrates who said, I drank what? So I want to know about burying a house, as it says in your liner notes. Yeah. Are you going to bury the house? Yes. It's, is that what I... Well, okay. It's burying the house. It should be buried. really kind of an interesting statement. Um, no, today I guess I wanted to talk a little bit about board games for some reason. I got a little bit in my head about that. Um... This comes in, in some respects off of whenever that was, uh, two shows ago when Chris had his man box of uh, random video games. It started me me a little nostalgic for, you know, playing things and, and having some fun. How's that? Yes, you should keep that in there, and I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, it's interesting to think about it. I don't know what you guys did in terms of playing games at some point in your life. I, I imagine we all grew up in sort of a similar world. Everybody played, you know, Monopoly or Life or one of those games or whatever. And they were all, you know, games that led people not wanting to play with you anymore. Or they were just so <laughs> simplistic that, you know, it's Candy <laughs> Land or something. Monopoly is a game that nobody likes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everyone hates Monopoly. Right. And yet they that lied was standard, like, right? It was what yeah. everybody thought that a game should be. Is yeah. you play this thing, you go around in a square, and you hate each other. It's boring crap. 
Wow. Right. So what's interesting is that over the last 15, 20 years, there has been a sort of revolution uh, in, in what we think of gaming. Um, started a lot in Europe. I think the vast majority of the games started there, and there's a company there that's done a fantastic job just sort of introducing Game of the Year games every year. Um, if you really go back, it's sort of, I think, the, the restart or the change in understanding was from Settlers of Catan, which I don't know if you guys have ever played before. Oh, yeah, you I've can, heard of it. But... You know, all the way back to the Avalon Hill games, man. <clears throat> Diplomacy, Third Reich, um, Civilization. Well, I mean, if you're going to say Diplomacy, that's the 50s. So that doesn't quite count. Yeah, but uh, these became fairly popularized as, uh, what do they call them? Shelf games, because they were put in boxes that would go on your shelf like a large hardback book. Okay. Um, late 70s. So okay. we played a lot of them mid 80s. Must have been a West Coast thing. Yeah, it was before Wizard of the Coast kind of came in and kind of redid everything. Um, okay. Yeah, there was quite a lot of at Dragon Con in Seattle, a board game convention. Right. Um, so I went to my first one of those in like 84 played a lot of things uh put play, play hell play risk if nothing else but mm -hmm. it, i think this is a like a second wave yeah so i think this is the the silver age of, of board games we're gonna go comic book on it all okay. right or, or maybe the bronze game, age game convention and comic book convention all in one it's the paragraph. new 52 yeah sure um, <laughs> the crisis of infinite earths it's the Secret Wars. Yeah, you're, you're Marvel people getting even more ridiculous. Um, so <laughs> the new mutants. Well, I, I would... <laughs> <laughs> it's the Image Comics of, of things. Actually, I think that would be a pretty good one. Yeah, this is kind of the Image Comics era where all the ind indies are coming in and doing all their little games. It's not all just Games Workshop or you know whoever coming in with their board games. As long as it's not Rob Leefield bringing it, but uh, never dug him. Anyway, Chris is looking there blankly and trying to figure out what the hell we're talking about here. Yeah, I just didn't do the board game thing. Play Dungeons and Dragons, uh, but not on the board game version. I think there's uh, the new stuff you can do with like. Oh, they finally and... got rid of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they get rid of that. Five point is coming out, and they're getting rid of all the stupid four point make I it World of Warcraft two. crap. Yeah, I played two, second edition, so when oh. I played it, I was chainmail. I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I played the original D&D &D as well. And then we went to second edition AD&D &D, and then we stopped. Mm. I started having sex. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you were still a LARPer. <laughs> were, you, were you a LARPer? You were never a LARPer. Uh... <laughs> were you a LARPer? Holy crap. <laughs> I was the worst kind. We uh, had a uh, game <laughs> that we would play from the uh, Wizards of the Coast stuff, the Vampire of the Masquerade. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So My, I, uh, I did that live action a couple of times. God, but I, I never played a vampire. I've always played a mage. Yeah, that, that's what's going to save you. <laughs> that, that helped me pick up the women much more effectively than being the vampire. World of Darkness. <laughs> that was that world. World of Darkness. Thank you. That's what it was. Mine's yes. Eye Theater. Was it something like that? The original? It might. Have, I don't know. It was a little group that uh, I, a guy oh God, I knew you were put a together. Lumper. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like maybe five times. Yes. So a maybe. Month. No, 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 <laughs> no. No, we had this uh, uh, the group that I was a part of in college uh, rented a building, one of the college buildings, and so we used this one of the college buildings. Uh, maybe once a semester over a couple of years. Mm -hmm. so. Now, was it some of your martial arts buddies that dragged you into this or what? No, no, no. Just a different group. Okay. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe it was them going a little over the deep end, wanting to beat the crap out of you people. But Oh, no, it was nothing like that. There was The combat was not, nothing like that at all. Um, in fact, there was very little <laughs> combat. Hugging. Yeah, it was actually very little combat that I was aware of anyway. But no, there was none of like that SCA Fireball. stuff. Yeah, no, it was nothing like that. But at least I, if, or if it was, I wasn't involved in it. I guess I was playing wrong if there was that going on. I was just walking around a building talking to people most of the time. 
Okay. So a Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Just at night as opposed to during the day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Uh, next, Anywho. Stephen, you're going to tell me you were in the SCA? No. Hmm. No, I, I actually, for some reason, didn't do that stuff. Maybe it was the whole sports side of my life. But, uh, you know, I, I think at one point I had the Dungeon Master's Guide, and I've read that, and that's the extent to which I did any Dungeons & Dragons. I never did any of the SCA or anything like that. I'd never heard of it until you mentioned it, Robert, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, Those guys are so, passionate. Yeah, yeah so I, I can't say I, I don't have that sort of experience. My, my social interactions were more, let's say, between humans. But, you know, that's my own thing. Yeah. Um, oh, but board games. I had a life when I was a kid. Yeah, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's better than the rest of us. I'm, I'm married and have two kids. I, this, this is my social time. Come on now. Um, <laughs> no, I'm going to bring it back around here. I'm going to cut you guys off and actually talk about board games again. Right. So what I really dig is that they've created a lot of different ways you can play the games now. So it's not a situation in which you have to just, you know, again, have the sort of fixed board and you sort of wander through and go around in circles and spin a little wheel or pop a little something or other. Um, you, you've got these very different things. So Carcassonne, which is a very popular game, is tile-based. So you just sort of reach into a bag and you pull out a tile and you play it somewhere on the, on the thing and you build stuff out and so forth. Uh, which I think is really kind of a fun thing, and there's all there's like four or five different expansions. It's it's a easy game you can run from like two to ten kind of a thing. It's very easy to spread out. Ticket to Ride is very popular, um, very simple and straightforward to to walk uh, into, to step into. Not that complicated in order to manage across the space. Uh, Stone Age is another simple two-player kind of game. It can go out to as many as four people, but two to four people works out well. Um, it's a little bit more complicated to step into. Uh, but what I what I like is one of the, the kind of interesting things is Pandemic. Now, Pandemic is a cooperative game, which means you're all on the same side. Uh, you're working together to not lose the game, which is kind of a different way of playing games. So there's there's the cooperative games and then there's also the spoiler something like that games in which you theoretically you're all working together except for one person drew a role that they're actually trying to take everybody else down uh, so there's Battlestar a Galactica. Um, yeah Battlestar Galactica great one so there's a exactly. Cylon yeah and so you don't know which person is the Cylon but you've got everybody supposed to be working together on this thing so there's yeah. that's another little twist and it's, there's really kind of fun ways of being um you know, turning the whole gaming thing on its head for those who are trying to figure out what games to play and how to do it, though, of course, I would always recommend what Will Wheaton has out there. He's got his uh, tabletop web series where he basically gets together a couple, uh, a couple of his friends. They play a game. It's like four people playing a game where they introduce the rules on the game and they, they actually go through a whole episode or, you know, a whole game on it. So it's, you know, every episode's about an hour. They've edited it through to so that, you know, it's always an hour. So sometimes they skip through some of the games, you know, a little faster or whatever. But it gets you a good sense of how to play these games, what they like, you know, what the interactions are, which is kind of fun, too. You know, it's it's fun. They're joking. It's that kind of experience. So I think it lowers the cost of getting into the games as well. So you kind of see what you're getting into. Would you like this kind of a thing? Uh, I was excited about it. I'm excited about taking this with my kids and actually ha introducing them to board games that are not terrible. Because I actually always really enjoyed those when I was a kid. I liked playing games and playing them through and thinking about, you know, how they could work. And a lot of the games were terrible. I mean, yeah, you could play Risk. I had fun with Risk. Mm -hmm. But, man, Monopoly was a game that my family just, we at the end of the day, stopped wanting to deal with each other. Yeah. Uh, it's not as good as Junta, which is a <laughs> game that basically if you want to destroy your friendship with somebody, you play this game. Which is, the whole purpose of the game is to kill each other. That's all it is. So it's backstepping. It's basically based on the ideas of um, the Banana Republic uh, juntas that or kudatas that were going on back in the seventies. Um, it's kind of a ridiculous game, but it's it's all about destroying other people. It's kind of fun that way too. So a less fun version of Tropico. Okay. You haven't played Tropico? A, no, but it's oh, a dude. A you got to play more, Tropico. A more over the top version of diplomacy. Uh, Tropico is a uh, it's the Banana Republic version of like Civ ah. the Civilization games I think they're on number 5 they're, yeah. they're so over the top they're just a hell of a lot of fun as you set up your little dictatorship on your little Banana Republic island you know and use and abuse your people and then they eventually try to overthrow you <laughs> it's great yeah I appreciate that So 
yeah you walk around with the big strokey beard the hat the cigar you know, the whole thing they're all everybody looks like a castro wannabe that's good so chris is a larper could get into that yeah, yeah, no, I was not a larper. <laughs> five times, you do something five times in your life, and you, it's like you regret it ever since. Next mm. week, Chris, I'd like you to actually come in with a beard and you know, <laughs> scar. I would, but it's such a pain in the ass to shave a beard off, which is why I shave every day. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I just don't want to go through the effort. For me, it's easier just to lawn mow my face with the electric razor and say the hell with it, you're done, and do that once a day. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's awesome. I never had the stones to actually be a LARPer. You you have to either be totally clueless or have unbelievable self confidence. And I was clueless. <laughs> oh, I was going to put you in category two, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I just no, uh, I I couldn't no, take I, the public ridicule. I I no I. I Honestly, when I did it, I had a good time. I liked what I liked, and if people didn't like it, I didn't care. Yeah. I was old enough at that point that people didn't like it, so what? Don't do it. So. No, no, it's I had cool, a good time man. when I did it. Yeah, I think it's fun. There you go. I wish I would have. Still can. Uh, yeah. No. We could do one. You do you want to? We could put one a on. episode. The, the three of us <laughs> would oh, be an exciting God. experience. <laughs> I'm not the vampire. <laughs> <laughs> I have zero acting skill. Oh yeah, nobody did. None of no one that played the game did have any acting skill whatsoever. So what class is older inept nerd? That's the one I can manage. Older. <laughs> yeah, with a bum knee. With a bum knee. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Anyway, Chris's turn. All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, a couple weeks ago, I was watching a show called Falling Skies. Have you guys seen that show? Yep. It, nope. Okay. With Noel uh, Wiley. What's that? Yes, yes. Noel Wiley. The I, librarian. The story. <laughs> story. He was an er. <laughs> yes, er. he was an er. er. Yeah. The He's story better is, as the librarian, man. <laughs> uh, aliens land on Earth, <laughs> take Earth over, people fight back. The end. Um, yeah. <laughs> The, the thing uh, with it is, is I've been watching the last season or uh, the, well, the current season, let's just say this past season. Yeah, I haven't They're getting seen ready the to um, have their season finale um, I think it's next week. And as I've been watching it this season one thing has become apparent to me, or at least it seems to be apparent to me. I don't think they know where they're going. I don't show. think they knew where they were going at the beginning, man. I, you know, like the first season was fine. You're 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 following this group of people as they're leaving Boston, trying to survive against you know insurmountable odds of these aliens. And then there's a season where they end up in Charleston, which becomes the new capital of the U.S., and are camping out there for the season. And then new aliens come. It turns out to be on their side, and they fight with the new aliens or a little bit. And, camp out somewhere else exactly <laughs> like, there's this weapon that they build they don't know if it's a good form or not and then this season they start sort of in this concentration camp where some of them are in this like you know prison and then others are looking or wandering around the woods and another one's in this what so seems like to be a group paradise or something i don't know the point here is if it sounds confusing it's because it is i don't know where this is going and so what i wanted to talk about were shows that had a plan and shows that did not have a plan. And I prefer shows that had a plan. I like shows like Babylon 5, where they said from the outset, this is going to be over five years, and this is what we're going to do. Except for they did change that pretty dramatically. They had to, though, because well, yeah, they thought it was going to be canceled. Well, and also, and also they found out that the guy who was the, the uh, captain in the first season was having a psychotic break. Yes. So he had to quit. Yeah, that was another change that they had made, right? But they did that. Well, yeah, yeah, but also remember the first season, uh, uh, Straczynski did not write the entire first season, but he wrote everything after that. Right. So I think that's when it became a much tighter arc. Yes, yes. Hmm. Fair enough. And as it, it shows go, I mean, I don't think there's any show 
where year after year, episode after episode, you have one guy pretty much writing it all. I think Sorkin did for West Wing. That was when he was on the serious shrooms and uh, yeah. Impediments. But West Wing seemed to meander. Uh, it was character driven rather than plot yeah. driven. Yeah. Um, I think I think uh, more in a plot driven show though, if you just kind of bounce around, mm -hmm. it makes it weak. So for example, yeah. the uh, first season of the X Files, I think is much weaker than the middle where they had a real coherent plan and then it falls apart again at the end when everybody's just going off doing their own thing. They move it to LA and everybody's egos get involved. Um, I guess the difference. I don't think I necessarily need to see where a show's going for like lost. I couldn't see where that was going. Um, and I think it did have a coherent plan at the beginning. They yes. claim that all that end crap was planned, but I don't buy it. No, I don't either. It's just like when Lucas claims that he always intended, you know, Empire to be the way it was. Three, like he had six. some grand plan. It's just oh, like, no, you made that crap up as you went along, dude. Um, yeah, I think I agree with Chris. I like it when there's at least they they have to at least have an outline of where this thing's supposed to go. Making it up as you go along. You go back to uh, Star Trek: Next Generation, right? Yeah, you end up with the beginning is crap. Luckily, it stuck around for a little while. Then the actors kind of carried it from strength of personality. And you have great episodes and crappy ones. And then it goes totally to crap at the end. You know, where everybody gets tired and bored and is, you know, directing episodes and writing episodes and off doing their other thing, you know, collecting their check. Um, as opposed to things with a more coherent arc. Um, the first season of... of um, Oh, the David Lynch thing. I love it. Twin Peaks. Yes. That had an arc. The second season did not. Second season was just episode to episode rambly crap. Uh, the first season was brilliant. And the second was crap. So, yeah, I'm totally with Chris on this one. I like it well, when the, <clears throat> they seem to have a plan, especially now when you can go catch up. You know? It's yes. Not, it's not like the old days where everything you had to be able to just watch an episode. People dropped in, dropped out. And it was audience death if you had an arc. Right. Um, now it's more like, you know, shows like the way like 24 used to be. Now, there was a planned show. <laughs> 24 episodes. The, the plan was to, to, end. Wa to create yeah. the first season over and over again, but we'll ignore that point. Yeah, but it's still, it's each season's planned. You know, they aren't just winging it yeah. as they go along. Now you had good ones and you had really bad ones. Uh, but at least there was a plan. I also knew when it was a bad season, it was going to be bad. <laughs> you don't have to see very many. It's just like, okay, this season's going to suck. I'm done. You know? Um, they got rid of Dennis Hastert. That was in the end. Because that man, he's awesome. He's the only reason I watched The Unit, and that was not a good show. That was, no. <laughs> Great major yeah. league. But he was on it. So, I would say, you know, I, would, I like shows that have a, they, they know how it's going to end. Right? Yeah. And they say, all right, we're, we're going to have this much specified time as opposed to, you know, let's see how long we can drag the show on, which I'm seeing like Falling Skies has become or um, Haven. I don't know if you've watched um, Haven on the Sci-Fi channel. That's I another tried. show where it started off really strong yeah. first couple of seasons. It's like I could see where this goes. That's a show. Haven is a show that probably could have been a one season show. And yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing more one season shows. More you like know, the Brits gotta, do stuff. Yeah, I've got a story to tell. I'm going to tell the story. Maybe it takes two seasons. Maybe it takes one. Maybe it takes three. Whatever. Um, probably for practical purposes, you really can't go, you know, and predict too far past one season. But just, you know, tell your story. Be done with it, as opposed to letting it drag on and on and on well, and so, on. So that's the the difference, right? So I, I would say the British model has more been in that that space. We'll do eight episodes, and that will be the entire theme. Right, we don't have to go on and on, but but the innovation on that, to your point, Chris, was True Detective, you know, the HBO show. It had a season. It had these actors. That season's over with, and they're making entirely new season with entirely new actors, an entirely new theme, and so it's just the only continuation between season one and season two is that it's written by the same guy. Okay. You know, so it is, it is a statement of we have a contained story. We're going to tell the story and we're going to do it. But it's also it the fresh. advantage of doing this on you yeah. know HBO. Right. 
you know, you could have a show that lives forever on HBO, like True Blood, which I think season four or something resulted in them getting to Pixies or something. I don't know where that <sighs> show went. Um, it got really weird after I, I, a while. I try to support genre television, you know, because I, I want it made, but most of it is so bad. <laughs> And most of it's just you know pretty people on parade on the CW, or is that the current version? What is the current version? Yeah, I think it's CW. Okay, I can never know. It was okay. WB and UPN, and then became CW. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was UPN then uh, WB then. No, those were two separate ones. They started at the same time. Oh, oh okay. okay. They merged ish. Yeah, because uh, UPN. The only reason that existed okay. was Star Trek. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, have a story, tell it, and then bow out gracefully, and uh, don't let these things drag on. Or if you're gonna have multiple seasons like this, then do. I haven't seen True Detective, but I think that sounds kind of cool, you know. Mm -hmm. Or tell the story again from a different character's perspective. That could be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Or be a sitcom. Um, yeah. I mean, you expect what? a sitcom to be just no plot. Yeah. No right. Plot is just about the characters. Right. Seinfeld story about you know show about nothing. So. No, I mean, I, I'm really impressed with uh, Sherlock. I, I really like how they do that. So it's, you know, three seasons of three episodes each. Each episode is a two-hour movie. Yeah. You know, oh, it's, okay. It's a much more manageable thing. I have a story to tell because it's, here's the book. You know, that was the original theme, but it's really is, here's a story I want to tell. And so you do a story, and you, then you do another story, and you do another story, and then we're done. Right. So I think that's a lot more manageable though they will have up and downs i mean you even have their seasons they tend to have you know one great episode one very good episode and one okay episode just yeah. because yeah that's true it's, it's hard to make all up right you can't hit all home runs right? right right yeah and i haven't seen the most current season of orphan black but um i watched the first one it was brilliant um if you guys haven't seen that it's mainly one actress playing yeah. almost all the roles because well she's a clone um but she's brilliant you know, yeah. Each no, one feels I've heard like a distinct individual. I mean, you forget after a while that it's the same woman playing each of these roles. Uh, you know, to the point where you almost think, "No, no way." <laughs> you know, it's got to be other people. She's got to be like, you know, they were triplets, right? <laughs> you know, they were all raised separately. Uh, right, right, right. But yeah, most of the good TV now, unfortunately, seems to be coming out of the, you know, BBC America. Well, no, I mean, you've got, you've got that aspect of things and you've also got, um, you know, AMC or you've got whatever. I mean, you've got the cable-esque things that are doing interesting things, more risk-taking. Yeah. yeah. I think that's and what it comes down to. You have Netflix coming in now with some series right. that I haven't honestly been all that thrilled with. Um, I watched the first episode of Orange is the New Black and I thought to myself, eh. Um, and then there's another one. I think it's Hemlock Grove or... Oh, the horror uh, thing. Yeah, yeah it's growth. got uh, Famke Jansen in it. Um, mm -hmm. And I watched the first hour of the first episode of that one. And again, House of Cards. yeah, I haven't seen House of Cards. So that would be one to check out because I know well, a lot Lisa of people binged to the one. two seasons in two days. Wow. So she was really into House but that's, of Cards. That's like a political drama kind of thing, isn't yeah, it? It's political yeah. drama. I don't know if I'd probably, I don't think I'd like that. I don't know. But I'd give it a shot. Well, it depends on whether you really like Kevin Spacey. Oh, okay. If you like him, you'll love it. If you don't like him, you'll hate it. Okay, kind of indifferent, so yeah. don't think about it. So, these okay. guys are so sad. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Going back to Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh, sorry. Totally different show. And oh, I the best that. Saturday Night Live parody fortunate. I've ever seen was William Shatner doing that. Have you ever seen that one? <laughs> no. Yeah, he's in the no, desert. Too. It's it's him as Kirk. He's he went to the box. He opens the box, and it's him as T.J. Hooker in the box. This talking head. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty damn fantastic. Excellent. Yeah, only Shatter could have pulled that thing off. That's what we should have is uh, '80s TV shows night where we do uh, Chips and T.J. Hooker, Night Rider, Night Rider. Oh, A Team. A -team. Oh, the A Team. Yes, the great. required montage. George Papard. I always love it when I play it. Yeah. Uh, I liked uh, do, do. the crazy one, Murdoch. That's Murdoch. How like Mad Murdoch. Yeah. yeah. Always fantastic. And also, for some reason, was in Star Trek for a while. 
yeah, that's right. He was brilliant. He was Barkley, yeah. right? Barkley. Yeah. 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 He was really good. And then yeah. you get what? Dirk Benedict, who was in two things. That and uh, Star Galactica. Star Galactica. Yep. And I think nothing, he was space, right? nothing else ever. Space. Yeah, he was space. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, it's this and house. And, of course, Mr. T. <laughs> Mr. T. Yeah. What a fantastic show. There is a really good episode of Key and Peel where they have Mr. T giving life lessons <laughs> it's on a playground that is is one of the best things I think I've ever seen. That in their <laughs> torture chamber, which I'm going to show in class. So it's a key and pill being tortured and having a really positive outlook and attitude about it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> because that's what I do. I well, you know, uh, I've long since established that the purpose of a class is to entertain me. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's appropriate. Don't you guys think so? Sure. Absolutely. What do you mean, sure? I've seen you teach, Stephen. <laughs> I'm there to entertain you. Yes. No, <laughs> you're there to entertain <laughs> yourself, man. Yeah, the same way, I, Chris. Chris actually like educates. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, if that's what you want to call it, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah, I can't take my job that seriously. All. All right, I think we have uh, given our spoon. listeners the the one that's probably still left. Uh, bonus time. Yeah. Yeah. Let's kick it out then, man. All right. What so, are we done? Remember, boys and girls, <laughs> we are done. We were. I was going to start. All right, we're ending, to, man. Yeah. So uh, you remember, get yourself ready. Okay, I'm just getting going. Girls. Damn it! <laughs> 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 All right. Remember, boys and girls, whatever you do this week, just keep it awesome. <laughs> The Hour of Awesome is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all the other Jester Cat shows at www.jestercat.com. You can also email the show at hoa at jestercat.com. Catch the show live Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern at www.jestercat.com slash TV. Follow the show on Twitter at hour underscore awesome. You can follow Robert at R.S. Macy. You can follow Stephen at S.E. Humphrey. And you can follow Chris at C.W. Culp. And thanks again to Scott Fletcher for the voiceovers. Go to voice.caroworks.com for more about Scott's great voiceover work.